But when you are invited, take the lowest place, so that when your host comes, he will say to you, friend, move up to a better place. And then you will be honored in the presence of all your fellow guests. For everyone who exalts himself will be humble, and he who humbles himself will be exalted. And then Jesus said to his host, when you give a luncheon or a dinner, do not invite your friends, your brothers, or relatives, or your rich neighbors. If you do, they may invite you back, and so you will be repaid. But when you give a banquet, invite the poor, the crippled, the lame, the blind, and you will be blessed. Although they cannot repay you, you will be repaid at the resurrection of the righteous. And so here we have this, this intro, this, this, this scripture here, leading us up uh, to our parable for the day, the, the great banquet, or the great supper. It's interesting that they watched him. See, they watched him because they laid a trap for him. See, there was a diseased man who was deliberately planted so that Jesus would heal him and break the law of the Sabbath. They knew he, he would because he had done this at least seven times before. But Jesus, in this leading scripture here, we see that he turns the tables on them. Uh, they were caught. If he had said, uh, if he had said, if they said no when he answered the question, is it okay to do it to heal somebody? They would appear heartless. If they said yes, their legalistic cronies would shun them. So they shut up, and Jesus, in a sense, put up. And Jesus, in verse five here, we see, and we see this verse one. They watched him. Verse two, they planted a man. Verse three, they were caught. Jesus challenged them. He hit them before they could hit them. Sometimes that's the best way to. To, if you ever have to get in the fight, the old saying was, you know, strike first. Sometimes it's the best blow. It doesn't leave him anywhere to go. Verse 5, Jesus is speaking of the letter of the law here. You know, he said, then he asked them, if one of you has a son or an ox that falls into a well on the Sabbath day, will you not immediately pull him out? And they had nothing to say. So Jesus brings up the letter of the law, and then he is addressing the spirit of the law. Because, see, there was an issue between the spirit of the law and the law. Remember, there's nothing wrong with the law. The law points out our, our uh, lack of ability to follow the law in most cases. It's a reminder of that. But what Jesus is leading up to a lot of times when he's challenging the law is sometimes man puts emphasis on the law that it doesn't allow uh, for us to... to, to Make the mark, to meet the mark. And so it was in the Old Testament law that following the law would not make us pure and righteous before God. And Jesus was, was leading up to something much more substantial. Uh, in verse 6, we see here that, uh, when, that all was quiet at the table. Let's look back here to verse 6 here. And they had nothing to say. That pretty much sums it up. Pretty quiet at the table there. Uh, I would imagine there was tension in the air. I would imagine it was, a, it was an awkward moment. Jesus, you know, they had a plan. They had everything set. Jesus strikes the first blow. He challenges them with the letter of the law. They were probably all sitting there questioning things within themselves when he was questioning. And then they had nothing to say. And then verses 7 to 11 are about as rich as it gets. In New Testament times, see, the closer you sat to the host, the higher you were on the social ladder. And the more you would be involved in the conversations of the table. And so Jesus was commenting on a common sense issue in those days at, at dinner time. For when the dinner bell rang, the, the guests would always come to the table. And uh, they would eat like they hadn't eaten for weeks. They would die for the best seats in the house. They clung to them like a spot on a monkey. Uh, I don't know if, if the kids did it when they went camping this trip, but when I went camping with them a couple times, we'd have to guard our chairs because if you got out of your chair, someone would bejank your chair, I think was the term, right? Isn't that the, the, the term? Your chair got bejanked to bejank is to steal someone's chair or, or seat or whatever. Is, are we still bejanking? Yes. That, that's the correct term or not? Thank you, Jake, for keeping it past me, but I want to say current on these things because, you know, I want to make sure that we're speaking in the language of the day. Amen? So they would like go. They would fight for the best seats. They would get their seat. And then they would hang on to it because they didn't want somebody to bejank their chair. Okay. And, um, and then Jesus began to teach them that self-promotion doesn't lead to fulfillment. 
that it is a temporary thing, that it is incomplete. In verse 11 he says, For everyone who exalts himself will be humbled, and he who humbles himself will be exalted. Jesus is starting to talk about humility. To be first, you've got to be willing to be last. Right. You know what's really cool? You ever go to, and I know I'm fat, and I know I like the buffets, and I like to eat. But, you know, it's kind of like this game that pastors play. I think we got some visiting pastors at the church today. That, that when you go to a potluck dinner, the pastor always wants everybody to eat first. Amen. Like, amen. amen. So you think that he's being generous, but actually he's embracing the law to be first, you have to be last. So he's letting everybody else to go in front of him. But Jesus is saying, you know, you've got to be willing to humble yourself. You've got to be willing to, to, you know, to, to let other people be blessed, to make room for other people to be honored. And when you do that, you're going to come along and receive a blessing for that. Because one of the messages that he, he reminds us of, you know, is everybody's going to get paid. But if you get yours now, you're not going to get any later. And sometimes it's best to get things later. With God, the way up is down. Can you imagine the tension now at the table? Jesus had healed a man in the face of their disapproval on Sunday. He looked, then looked at the, his guests straight in the eyes and corrected their manners. And then he corrects the host. Verses 12 through 14. Then Jesus said to the host, When you give a luncheon or a dinner, do not invite your friends, your brothers, or your relatives, or your rich neighbors. If you do, they may invite you back so that you will be repaid. But when you give a banquet, invite the poor, the crippled, the lame, the blind, and you will be blessed. Although they cannot repay you, you will be repaid at the resurrection of the righteous. The resurrection of the righteous. Again, who are the righteous? What makes us righteous? What justifies us? What allows us to be righteous and to stand before God? Not by my deeds, not by your deeds, but the fact that Jesus loved us enough to die on the cross and for those who receive God's gift through Jesus Christ, when we stand in front of Jesus, we are made righteous because of God's sacrificed Son. Amen. Jesus who, who is God. God who was the Word that became flesh. So the atmosphere was pretty tense. I'm sure nobody was saying a word and all of you could hear the sounds probably of the utensils in the back and the plates lightly tapping, you know, as the group cautiously uh, suffered through the rest of the meal. That is until one of them tried to smooth things over. You know, there's always somebody like that. The fixer, you know, the fixer. Um, you know, man, I, I tell you, I... I love to be at peace with people and we're called to be at peace with all people but you know some things you just can't fix some things you just have to let take its course sometimes we can get in the way of God's Holy Spirit when we try to fix things nobody ever likes to see a child fall off a step we all jump if a child was up here playing we would be like glued magnets and we'd be gaining position and waiting to make that you know, that leap of death to grab that child. But you know, when I was a kid and I fell off the step, I learned about a law called gravity. And so now I don't walk off the roof because I learned that law. There are laws, reaping and sowing. And sometimes, you know, as parents, and I, I'd say, you know, just as a Father's Day message to some of them fathers out there, you know, it's okay sometimes to let your children experience some failure because they grow from it. They learn biblical laws, laws of reaping and sowing, far more than you could ever tell them and they could, could ever learn. But somebody here tries to correct it, and so now we're moving into the parable, and it says, when one of those, beginning in verse 15, when one of those at the table with him heard this, he said to Jesus, Blessed is the man who will eat at the feast in the kingdom of God. Oh, blessed is the man who will eat at the feast in the kingdom of God. That sounds pretty spiritual, doesn't it? Well, that's about how Jesus took it. He's probably sitting there, oh brother. And Jesus said, well, you know, I'm on a roll. So, you know, Jesus replied, a certain man was preparing a great banquet and invited many guests. And at the